Hello beautiful people, happy Friday, happy weekend and welcome to your astrological forecast for next week and of course this one is predominantly focused on the upcoming very fast approaching new moon total solar eclipse in Aries and this is what we're going to be mostly focusing on. However, let me just mention a few things which I already covered in my last video but very very important thing yesterday sun had the conjunction with north node that started a completely new cycle as of yesterday 4-4 portal everything is changing because this upcoming eclipse is now happening in a new phase conjunction with the north node therefore the energy is completely different to the eclipses we've been experiencing before so uh prior to the on wednesday as we might remember venus conjunct neptune and then yesterday she moved into aries so venus also will be a participant of this eclipse she's in aries even though she's there is a white orb so she's not technically conjunct in it uh, but still influencing by mars being in pisces just like mars is influencing everything that's going on in the sign of aries and uh, today, this morning, early this morning, Moon moved into the sign of Pisces, where Moon will remain for the entire weekend, well, until Sunday, because Moon will already moved into Aries on Sunday. For me here, it will be very early Sunday morning, so I believe it will be for everyone on Sunday. Uh, and uh, that's how we're going to enter a new week, with Moon in the sign of Aries, which is a cardinal sign, the sign of a new beginning, and of course, that is... The preparation for the solar eclipse in Aries that will take place on Monday. Actually, here in uh, Puerto Vallarta, we're going to see it. <laughs> Not 100% coverage, but like 90 plus percent. So, Monday the 8th, we are experiencing the eclipse, total eclipse in Aries, solar eclipse on 19 degrees 24 minutes. Uh, for me here, it's 12.20 p.m. Depending where you are in the world, you need to adjust your time zone to that. And this eclipse is happening in conjunction with Chiron. So literally Chiron is exactly on the same degree as the sun and the moon. On Tuesday, moon will move into the sign of Taurus. On Wednesday, we'll have Mars conjunct Saturn. So this also is a very important thing that is playing out its role during this eclipse. And I will dive deeper into that and why that is uh, when I dive into the interpretation of the eclipse. Uh, on Thursday the 11th, moon moves into the sign of Gemini. Gemini is all about choice, as we know. And on the same day, Mar uh, sun in Aries will conjunct Mercury retrograde in Aries and Mercury of course is the rule of Gemini so on 11th April 11th we'll have uh, moon in the sign of Gemini and Mercury will have a conjunction with Sun Mercury retrograde in Aries Friday uh, moon is just going through Gemini doing what she does and so Saturday Sunday uh, all the aspects are being made just by moon there are not even aspects between asteroids nothing is happening literally on Saturday moon will move into the sign of cancer where she's in rulership of course and that's where moon will remain until Monday so once again we'll enter we end and enter into a new week with moon in a cardinal sign. So we can see how things have shifted because before it was moon in a mutable sign. We were like having to have to be um, flexible and adjustable and trying to figure out what's going on here. Which season are we at? Well, now moon is in cardinal sign. So that's saying there is definitely a shift of energy. We already heading in a new direction. And then on Monday the 15th, Mercury will make his second conjunction to Chiron. I'm mentioning it before because this is also present for the lunation. Mercury is within the degree conjunction to Chiron still. Mercury is now going retrograde, so it's getting closer to Chiron. We already had the first conjunction last month and there'll be one more in May. And as I uh, mentioned previously, each time Mercury is conjuncting Chiron during this free conjunction, Mars is in a different sign. And Mars is important because it's ruler of Aries and that's where Mercury and Chiron are. So anyway, so this is in nutshell what's going to be happening for the upcoming week. However, how is this impacting us? How is this impacting the eclipse? Because of course nothing is happening in separation, as I always keep saying. So the most important thing to pay attention to is that this eclipse is happening on the north node in the new phase conjunction, as I mentioned, because yesterday 4-4 portal, uh, I'm recording this on Friday the 5th, Sun made a conjunction to North Node. As I mentioned, this is changing everything. This is a very different energy from uh, a closing phase conjunction. 
because that is a culminating of the old cycles. This is beginning of a brand new cycle in Aries on the eclipse, total solar eclipse, not just any eclipse. And as I just said, uh, this is happening also in conjunction with Chiron. Chiron is having the exact conjunction with Sun, literally on the same day at the same time, 19 degrees, 24 minutes. So this is crazy because this is literally saying this Chiron is, well, Chiron is now going to ha get behind the sun because as we know, sun is the center stage. So every time sun conjuncts the planet, then the planet gets behind the sun. It becomes a closing phase. So what does this mean? This means that these stories of the past, because Jupiter Uranus are in conjunction, the exact conjunction is on April 20th, but they are already in conjunction, uh, literally two degrees apart. The story of the past is ending, everything is shifting. Literally, as of yesterday, 4 4 portal, we are playing with a completely different energy here. This energy will manifest over the time, and this is actually what I would like to share with you some tidbits of uh, investigation that I spent an hour doing prior to recording this and then I go deeper into these aspects but everything is connected so as people might remember last year in 2023 we had two new moons in Aries and interestingly enough they were in a um, what we call anaretic degrees the karmic degrees the first new moon in Aries happened on March 21st 2023 and it was on zero degrees of Aries zero degrees 50 minutes to be exact a number five number of change we know and actually, during this time, uh, the uh, this was a new moon. This was not an eclipse. Uh, it was just a new moon in Aries. Uh, it happened in conjunction with Neptune. Neptune was in a closing phase to this uh, new moon because it was zero degrees. Neptune is at the end of uh, Pisces, as we know. So we already knew that something was beginning that uh, created an energy that represents the end of everything that came before because Neptune is in Pisces. Pisces is the totality, everything that came before. Uh, Saturn just moved into the sign of Aquarius that month, March 2023. Sorry, Aquarius moved from Aquarius into the sign of Pisces at the beginning of March 2023. At this time, Pluto is still on 29 degrees 58 minutes uh, of uh, Capricorn. So this is the new moon Aries, Aries new moon, not the eclipse, new moon in Aries where Pluto is still in Capricorn on the last degrees, but Saturn is already in Pisces. Energy has already shifted. Saturn is no longer in Aquarius. And it's also happening in conjunction with Mercury. Mercury and Sun will have a conjunction after the eclipse later on this well, upcoming week. And actually, during the um, March 2023, uh, Chiron and Jupiter, Jupiter was in the new phase conjunction to Chiron, also in Aries. New story was being birthed with this new moon on zero degrees, which was not an eclipse. The story of the past was starting to end and the story of the future was already being there. It was the energy was already there. Venus was um, in a closing phase to Uranus at the time. Venus just made a conjunction to North Node, literally like a day before. Um, and uh, yeah. So the new cycle had begun at the time, um, March and also April, at the time of the first solar eclipse in Aries, Venus was still the ruler of the North Node, which was in Taurus. Jupiter, Uranus are having conjunction in Taurus. What does this mean? Well, Venus now, this year, is going to be in Aries during this conjunction. That means that our relationship, this opportunity for us to uh, start seeing ourselves and who we really are and what we came here to do and how much power we actually have. Have Taurus Scorpio in opposition, right? When we trust ourselves, we can step into our self empowerment. There is a brand new story that's being birthed, and this Aries new moon that was not an eclipse on March 21st on zero degrees that was literally the beginning of this journey. Then we go to the uh, Aries eclipse that happened last year. This was April 19th, 20th, depending where you are in the world. At the time, I was in Mexico, so for me, it happened on April 19th, 2023. That one was on 29 degrees, 50 minutes, another anaretic degrees, and again, the 50 minutes, again, the number five. The one before was 0050, number five. This one is 29, number 11, mass and number frequency, 50, number five. Of course, number uh, 11 and five, gives you what 16 which is number seven neptune what lost meaning because we're creating something that has a deeper meaning why i'm mentioning is because the as i keep saying every time you have a new moon the cycle of the previous uh 360 degrees of the previous year has ended 
So with this new moon solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, which we are experiencing on Monday the 8th, April 8th, 2024, the cycle that had begun last spring, well, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, especially this April eclipse, because it was an eclipse, but we had, uh, we also have to take into consideration there was another new moon in Aries on zero degrees a month before, just before Pluto moved into the sign of Aquarius for the first time. So this cycle is now ending. This cycle is ending now on Monday and a new cycle is beginning. However, this is still part of the bigger cycle of eclipses in Aries and Libra and bigger cycle that, you know, goes back to uh, the previous Aries Libra cycles with the South Node, North Node, which also I'm going to share some dates just to confuse people even further, but I can't help myself. I need to, you know, I need to share this, this information because it's important to, so we can see how things are not just happening today or tomorrow or something. This is something that's, that's, it's evolving. It's, it's literally, it's a continuum. It's something that is a natural part of our evolutionary journey because again, and I know I heard many people talking about this, many people are afraid but what are we afraid of? Evolution? You know, this is, which, and I mean, I understand from the human perspective, there are a lot of things that we can be afraid of, but this is a natural, natural aspect of life. We know that change is the only constant. And this, this is not something that just happened now. This is not something that was birthed last year or the year before. You know, this is part of the bigger, bigger circle, but the, the eclipse in a April 2023, that cycle is now ending and a new cycle beginning because the energies have shifted the energies changed at the time Pluto was squaring the nodes that was throughout the entire 2023 as we keep saying the resolution was the south node in Scorpio at the time of this eclipse in Aries 2023 uh, April 2023 and also interesting is that uh, at the time of the first new moon in Aries March 2023 Venus uh, as the ruler of the North Node at the time was in Taurus in her rulership, as I said, she just had a conjunction with North Node, so she was in a new phase. Mars was in Gemini. What is Gemini? Gemini is about choice. Mercury was conjuncting the new moon in Aries, zero degrees in March, and uh, therefore it was ruled. Mars was ruled by Mercury. Mars was the traditional ruler of the South Node, even though the modern ruler was Pluto at the time on 29 degrees of Capricorn. Now the eclipse in April 2020. 23 venus is in gemini so now venus as the rule of the north node was in gemini we need to start looking at things differently it's about the choice as i keep saying mercury plays a very important role in this entire process of what we are experiencing because it's inviting us mercury in aries currently retrograde making a conjunction to sun only a few days after the eclipse that, and i'm talking about the one now in april conjuncting Chiron three times under the rulership of Mars in different signs each time it's conjunct Chiron and Chiron is making an exact conjunction to this new moon in Aries this one 19 degrees 24 minutes is exact in it's exact and I, I you know just to um just to build up on that, there is another thing to pay attention to with regards to the moon and the Chiron, but I want to finish my thought here with this uh, hybrid solar eclipse uh, last year in April, because it was already in Aries, but the nodes are still in Libra and Taurus, sorry, not in Libra, in Scorpio and Taurus, but the eclipse was already in Aries. That's why it was hybrid. But um, Jupiter in the one in the eclipse in April 2023 Jupiter was conjunct in the eclipse Jupiter was in the closing phase new phase to Chiron we are creating a new story with regards to our wounding we are not our wounding Mars at the time was already in Cap Cancer we are creating a new sense of who we are we remember that uh, Mars was um, well Mars was in Gemini forever because it had retrograde, that it was Mars's last retrograde, and at the time, at this time, Mars was in Cancer, Mars moved into the sign of Cancer right after Pluto moved into the sign of Aquarius. So this might look completely inconsequential, but when we look at it from what we know now, this is very important, because Mars is the ruler of the eclipse in April 2023, was in Cancer, we are creating a new sense of identity, new sense of who we are, because we had the opportunity throughout uh, Venus being the rule of the North Node and the North Node being in Taurus to discover a new a way of looking at ourselves and our relation to life. And now Venus being in uh, the rule of uh, Libra as the 
uh, south node ruler, right? Um, the south node being in Libra and Venus is the ruler of the south node. I'm, I'm really sorry, but it's Mercury retrograde and this always has an impact on me. So just bear with me. Uh, this is a very different energy because now at the time of the current eclipse, which is happening on Monday, Venus as of yesterday, 4-4 portal, after she had a conjunction to Neptune the day before, as of yesterday, Venus is in Aries. Even though from the traditional perspective, you can go, oh, Venus in Aries is in detriment. No, everything is Aries is rebirth. Everything in Aries is starting a new cycle. This is how we're looking at it. We're not looking at the polarization. Is Venus in Aries strong? Every planet in every sign and every sign in itself and every planet in itself, they have a higher uh, vibrational expression and a lower vibrational expression. There is nothing to be afraid of. It depends on you and your frequency and your vibration, how you perceive the energy and which um, aspect of the energy you're tapping into. So, uh, I mean, I personally have Venus in Aries, as you can tell, and Mercury in Aries. I never looked at any of my planets as like, oh, I'm done doomed. You know, you're talking to Aquarius rising over here, so absolutely not. So I'm like, okay, Venus in Aries to me is always like uh, like a Kalima, like a Lilith. Venus, and actually, funnily enough, my Lilith is in Aries, <laughs> conjuncting this eclipse. <laughs> but yeah, so this is exactly what I mean. Venus is now reborn. Venus is still, even though she's not conjuncting the eclipse now in April, she's participating because she's in the same house. She's in the same uh, Aries, you know, impacted by Mars being in Pisces with the fire of creation. Last year, as I said, when this cycle began, well, I mean, the cycles of the eclipses, they are long lasting. But when we're looking at it from the perspective of new moon to new moon, you know, like the next new moon is taking over. It's like, OK, well, what we see did last year at the new moon. Now this is being upgraded because now Pluto is in Aquarius. Actually, during the eclipse in April 2023, Pluto was already in Aquarius because Pluto changed sign after the first new moon in Aries. So Pluto was already in Aquarius during the new moon solar eclipse in Aries 2023, April 2023, squaring the nodes, pointing to the south node that was in Scorpio, ruled by Pluto, traditionally ruled by uh, Mars. Mars, what is your identity? What are we attached to? What are we afraid of? We are afraid to the old identities, to the old story, to what well, what was before, because cancer is the memory bank. Cancer is the memories, is the ancestor line, it's the roots, right? So this is something that got seeded last year. As I said, Venus was in Gemini. Venus at the time was the ruler of the North Node. Even though the eclipse was in Aries, it was happening on the North Node. North Node was in Taurus. Venus was in Gemini. Gemini is about choice. It is about looking at things from a different perspective. Jupiter was in a closing phase to Aries, the eclipse a year ago. It was saying that story is ending because Jupiter was in a new phase conjunction with Chiron. We need to start looking at our wounding from a different place, Mars. This is what made a part of your journey, but this is not all you are. The totality of who you are is beyond, is beyond our labels. So, okay, so I'll, I'll get over this eclipse last year because, you know, like we don't need to spend the entire video talking about that. Now is the solar eclipse current, current solar eclipse. As I mentioned, important things to pay attention happening on a new north node, new phase. Last year, closing phase, closing phase. The North Node was still in Taurus. Also for the, all the eclipses afterwards in Libra and Taurus in uh, fall, the, the, the nodes were in a closing phase, closing phase to the eclipse. The cycles were ending. Now is a new phase. This is the first eclipse with the new phase conjunction to the node. Also the one in fall in Libra, it will be in a new phase to the south node. Sun just conjuncted north node. Sun will also have a conjunction with the south node still in Libra prior to the eclipse in Libra. Because it will be in a new phase, right? So it has to happen that way. Uh, and that will be on the 29th, September 29th. Sun will conjunct the south node on the same day as Mercury. And Sun-Mercury conjunction will, hap will happen on the 1st of October, which is a day before the next solar eclipse in Libra. So we have to pay attention to these things because these things are part of the story. We are <laughs> changing the way of looking at life. We are changing our relationship to life. 
we are changing what experiences we will be having going forward from now on because this is a new phase conjunction to North Node Eclipse. It's and it's a total eclipse. This is a very, very, very different energy. And like I said, conjuncting Mercury, exact conjunction is happening uh, on the 11th between Sun and Mercury. The last conjunction between Sun and Mercury, just uh, to remind everyone, happened on February 28th at the same time as so Mercury conjunct Sun, Mercury conjunct Saturn, Sun conjunct Saturn. So on the same day, a new cycle between Mercury and Saturn. Saturn is our matrix, as our definition is the manifestation of our thoughts. Because our reality is created from our thoughts and beliefs. And Saturn manifests it. Saturn turns the formulas into form and form into formless. And Saturn is in Pisces, right? It's ending the old. Because we understand the meaning, we are encouraged to understand the meaning. So, the last conjunction between Sun and prior to that, Sun and Mercury conjuncted in Capricorn on like zero degrees, I think it was, because it was right before Mercury retrograded back into Sagittarius in December. I think it was the uh, solstice day, if I remember correctly. And now uh, the, the one before this one, Mercury conjuncted Sun in Pisces on the same day as uh, Mercury-Saturn, Sun-Saturn conjunction in Pisces. That is, again, reset. Closing cycles, beginning new cycles with regards to how we identify the world around us because we need to go beyond. We need to connect with our true essence of who we are to perceive reality from multidimensional perspective through the higher vantage point, understand the meaning uh, include the spiritual aspect of our being, not just the human aspect. They have to be both present because this is what we birth in the new, new human, right? When the spirit is present. Now, Sun and Mercury are conjuncting in Aries under the influence of this new energy, solar eclipse in Aries. Mercury is retrograde, making us to reevaluate what does this mean for us. They already conjuncting in, uh, in uh, Capricorn, like, okay, well, we know the structure that as we knew it is dissolving, that Mercury went back into Sagittarius in December. What are the stories here? That Mercury Sun conjuncted in Pisces, same day as they conjuncted uh, Saturn. Okay, we know this is ending. Now they conjuncting in Aries under the influence of the full, the new moon total eclipse. So this is, we can we see how things are moving? They are moving. The dial is turning. Things are moving. They're progressing. And then, of course, Sun will be uh, putting Mercury behind itself. And so Chiron, you know, Chiron is participating. All of these things happening in Aries are ruled by Mars in Pisces. Mars is in the closing phase to Saturn. Again, the structure of reality as we know in is not, that's it. That's it. It's not going... Every single message I'm channeling, the Spirit is saying, that's it. It's maxed out. It's totaled out. That's it. Because that which we have been experiencing now, apparently for 2,000, 10,000 years, that's the message I channeled for myself yesterday, the, the number 10,000, 10,000 years, where we've been living this kind of life, you know, of restriction, more and more restricted, more and more like our soul being squashed into smaller and smaller box. That's it. It maxed out. It's maxed out. Now it's a brand, brand new life is being birthed as we speak. And the, the, literally the, the initial conception of that was last year. That wasn't even this year. This is like, you know, the energy is already here. Last year, it was just a thought. It was just, a, you know, the void. And then the, the sparkle, the sparkle was created. Now it's, it's, it's here. It's here. The energy is here. This is a new phase conjunction. It's like becoming manifest. So this is, this is, this is a very different energy. So Mars, as the ruler of this eclipse in Aries, happening on Monday the 8th, 8th of April, which is 8, 4 of the year 8, right? So we have 12, 3, plus 8, 11. So Mars, the number of frequencies happening on a day that is adding up to number 11. In a month, that is adding up to number 3, 4 and 8, 12. Number 3, 12 is the, is the hangman, is the change of perspective. Everything is being turned upside down. Hanged man is associated with Neptune. The end is the end of the cycle. Number three is associated with Jupiter. Jupiter is about growth. It's about learning. It's also about collaborations, getting together, reunific reuniting, right? Number 11, number two, it's about uh, the duality. It's also about reconnection, reconnection, marrying, the, marrying our higher self, like becoming whole again. Because that is the highest vibration of Neptune and Pisces, the unity, oneness, return to oneness. 
So the cycle then can start again. So this is where we can go digging, nitty gritty. But the one thing uh, regarding this uh, Mars uh, Saturn conjunction that is exact uh, two days after the eclipse on uh, April 10th, uh, Mars uh, Saturn conjunction is becoming exact. Last time, last time Mars and Saturn had a conjunction. So the cycle is ending now on Wednesday the 10th. The cycle between Mars and Saturn that had begun. In 2022, and we know 2022 was a busy year because that was the year when Mars and Venus conjuncted for the last time prior to this year, 2024. They conjuncted twice in Capricorn and then again in um, Aquarius. That was the last time Mars conjuncted Pluto and Venus conjuncted, well, Venus conjuncted Pluto again since then. But that was the last time Mars conjuncted Pluto in Capricorn. Now, everybody conjuncted Pluto already in Aquarius. We can see how things are changing, they're turning. So, the important thing to pay attention to, to this last conjunction that happened between uh, Mars and Saturn, which was on, um, did I say February? I don't know what day I said. It was April, 5th of April, 2022, 22 degrees, 24 minutes. It was on the same day, Mars was squaring the node. Mars as the traditional rule of the south node. Mars as the planet that is showing us consciously what Pluto wants, because Pluto is a subconscious. It's like, you know, it's beyond. It's, you know, it's far away from sun. So Mars is how Pluto acts consciously. So we pay attention. So the conjunction between Saturn and Mars happened, last one prior to this one, happened on April 5th, 2022. In Aquarius, 22 degrees, 24 minutes Aquarius, and Mars was squaring the nodes. Resolution, south node. In Aquarius. No, wait. Aquarius. Let me see the chart, because you see, like, I need to see the visual. Okay, Mars was in Aquarius, squaring the nodes. Yes, resolution was the one to the left, uh, Scorpio, exactly. Yeah. So that was the resolution node ruled by Pluto. Pluto was in Capricorn, of course. Uh, Mars was the traditional ruler of the node. And at the time, Jupiter was in a closing phase to Neptune. 2022, April 2022, we're going even further away. Uh, Jupiter was closing to Neptune. The story lost meaning. Saturn was in Aquarius. We know Saturn moving to the sign of Pisces a year later, 2023. And uh, all of them in Aquarius were squaring the nodes. But Mars was squaring the notes exact. Mars was squaring the notes exact um, on that day, on the day of the uh, Saturn Mars conjunction, which was four days after the new moon in Aries, which was just a new moon. Yeah. And Venus, because already the notes were in Scorpio Taurus, Venus as the ruler was also in Aquarius because, as I mentioned prior, uh, they had a conjunction with Mars the Mars month before and month before that. Oh, 11-11, fantastic. Okay, so yeah, so all was happening in Aquarius. There was a lot of stuff that was seen in Aquarius at the time and everything was square in South Node in Scorpio. Where do we feel disempowered? Well, the disempowerment comes from the definition of reality we are experiencing at the moment, which Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, April 22, already lost meaning. Already lost meaning at the time. Okay, um, I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to go too deep into different rabbit hole and lose everyone that is still watching. But this is, this is, this is crazy. You know, literally, last Saturn-Mars conjunction happening also right after the new moon in Aries, just like now, it's happening right after the new moon in Aries, but this one is an eclipse, and at the time, everybody was in Aquarius, squaring the nodes, and, um, you know, Mars was the rule of the south node. So, yeah, uh, as I already mentioned, the... Uh, um, Sun Mercury conjunct next week. Literally, we have this eclipse that's gonna like totally <laughs> kick a punch, uh, conjuncting Chiron, and then we just have the Mars Saturn conjunction and Sun Mercury conjunction, and then the Chiron Mercury conjunction is happening on Monday the 15th, exactly on the same degree as the eclipse, not the same minute, but exactly on the same degree. So it's gonna reactivate the same spot. So it's just going to poke more, you know, poke where it hurts because we need to um, be able to face our fears and our wounding because this is the thing, you know, this is the thing where we actually feel um, 
safe and secure within ourselves and we trust ourselves and we trust our connection to the higher power to the spirit we, we, we you know there is always like you know room for doubt and all that you know we all human after all but if we have that unwavering faith right faith and hope then whatever is happening outside of us you know we know it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay because this human incarnation we are playing out here, that role, this avatar, you know, this cancer, my identity over here in this lifetime, this is not all there is. This is just a chapter. And I always keep saying to everyone that comes to me, you would never be experiencing something you're not ready for. Your your higher self would not allow you to face something that you cannot overcome because it's it's part of you, you know, you're part of it. So anyway, at the same time, this eclipse, current one, you know, not going uh, diving into the past anymore. Uh, the current eclipse, uh, also um, Venus as the ruler of the south node, even though Venus is already in Aries, Venus is being reborn, it's still in the conjunction with Neptune, new phase conjunction, because they just conjunct it now on April 3rd. So Venus is already creating a new cycle with regards to what holds a meaning. This is to do with the relationships, how we change in our uh, Appro approach to relationships with people to relationship with anything to do with our life because our relationship to ourselves already was meant to you know was encouraged to change you know throughout the 2022 till mid 2023 when the north node was in the sign of taurus and this was throughout all these happenings i just mentioned 2022 aries moon 2023 aries moon and 2023 moon uh, aries eclipse all in you know springtime of the uh, northern hemisphere throughout this entire time north not was in taurus there was all taurus venus being the ruler so now like i said mars is just about to hit saturn two days later so again beginnings and endings and uh, venus is already in a new phase with neptune rule of the south node rule of the north node we are seeking a deeper meaning through our relationship to life and everything that is external of us we're looking for more because we weren't born to be slaves definitely not in this incarnation like you know like i said the source has maxed out of that experience that was a long 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 many thousand years of experience in the same thing in different degree with different details but that's it jupiter uranus are conjuncting in taurus they are closing the loop that began between the two of them in and this is something i'm going to co cover of course next week because it's happening on the 20th the the conjunctions between uh, the uh, uranus and jupiter were happening throughout 2010 and 2011 in pisces and aries the first one from my investigation but i'll dig deeper but from what i understand first one was in aries zero degrees in june 2010 and then the other two, retrograde and then direct, for both of them, uh, were in Pisces. Beginnings and endings. This was 2010, 2011. This is now going to be closing on April 20th. And now it's in Taurus. The next conjunction between uh, Uranus and Jupiter will be in the sign of Cancer. 2037, 38. I already mentioned this year. What did I say? Those are the years where we're going to have the next, uh, what was it? Chiron North Node conjunction. And they will be also in the sign of Gemini and Cancer. What does this mean? We can see a lot of Gemini and Cancer coming up here. Why? Because the information that we gather, how we identify reality, it creates, uh, it has an impact of how we see ourselves because it's all a feedback mechanism. You know, that's why we need to be very conscious about what we consume, you know, with regards to information because it has an impact on who we, who we are becoming, you know, like... Um, Gemini is before Cancer. So you have Gemini, Cancer, then you have Leo, right? You know, like seriously, with Mercury retrograde, I'm not sure about anything. But uh, yeah, so we gather information and then our identity is being created. And then based on what we believe, who we believe we are, we go chasing after a purpose, right? Leo, you know, we want to self-actualize, show the world. This is who I am. Now I figure it out, right? So we have a lot of these Mercury, Gemini activations and also Cancer. Like I said, Mars is going to start its retrograde in Leo at the end of the year, but then it's going to go into Cancer, back into Cancer. So there is a lot of Cancer. Answer, you know already i mentioned during this um where was it which one was it yeah the hybrid solar eclipse in april 2023 mars was in cancer venus was in gemini there we go cancer gemini again what are we creating we are making a new choice with regards to who we are 
because that is going to change everything. Because as I keep saying, as I keep sharing my channeled messages, the reality is created from inside out, not outside in. The outside is the feedback mechanism. It's just to offer a mirror to show us where we are at, which we can then change. So when we really look at what's going on right now with this eclipse, you know, when we really zoom out and, uh, you know, like for, for a moment, uh, not think about all the things we are afraid of and all the unknown and all the things that might or might not happen or whatever, if you actually look at it from the bird's eye view, like, okay, well, why is this all taking place? What is happening over here? You know, what does this eclipse is bringing in? What is it trying to help us to understand, to see, to show us, you know, with all this stuff that's happening, this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, Saturn-Mars uh, as the rule of the North Node conjunction, Venus new face to Neptune, but Venus already in Aries, even though Neptune is in Pisces, they're still in conjunction and the actual eclipse happening in conjunction with Chiron and Mercury. And Mercury and Chiron are having three conjunctions. Each time Mars is, you know, ruler um, from a different sign. And, you know, all this, uh, while Pluto is already in Aquarius, still direct until May. Like, what, what does all this mean? What does all this mean? Why is all this happening? Like, why are you even talking about this? Why are we scared? You know, that's the main question. Because the life as you know it, the life that has been, um, well, created with us, for us, without our full understanding what's happening, that is ending. Because now we are uh, invited to actually change the way we're looking at everything you've been ever told. Everything that you think you are, everything that you think is part of your history, and ask questions and reevaluate and actually start seeing things more multidimensionally and reconnect with your true essence of who you are, the cancer, the intuition, the moon in cancer, in its rulership that, you know, like I said, is going to be happening when next week sometime. <laughs> Let me see where is my ephemeris for next week. When is the cancer? Yeah, next weekend. Uh, moon will move into cancer, which is the sign of her rulership on Saturday the 13th. <laughs> and it will be, it will be still there. For the next Mercury Chiron conjunction, Moon will not move into Leo until, for me, night of Monday. For you guys in Europe, it will be already Tuesday. So, isn't that interesting? Mercury Chiron conjunction next week on the fifteenth, and and this is all playing role in the eclipse because Mercury and Chiron are both conjunct in the eclipse, right? New phase at the time. One Sun makes a conjunction, then they go behind. They're gonna be in a closing phase. However. The mercury Chiron conjunction, the next one, is happening under influence of Moon in its rulership, in the sign of Cancer, which is about tap into your intuition and start believing in yourself, really. You know, I mean, Venus is in Aries, like I said, Venus is being reborn. What does this mean? It's saying that, well, you are on a path of self-discovery. So, I mean, seriously, guys, like, I mean, I don't know, even know, like... Um, when you look at the life, when you look at the world, and like I said, yeah, like even if even if you just you know uh, don't focus too much about how many people are unhappy and feel like they don't have a purpose and their life has no meaning and there, but when we re really look at the life, and this is something that I you know I guess I was fortunate or unfortunate to know all my life. I was born with this knowing. I don't even you know like I, I'm not taking credit for it. I literally was. I knew it all my life. I knew it. When we look at the life as, as we know it, the life that has, uh, you know, now is in its full manifestation, right? Everything that came before is in full manifestation. Do you really believe that you came here to this beautiful planet to just work and die and go for vacation once, twice a week and just go through this rat race and then rat race every day and somebody tells you, well, this is normal. This is how it is. This is what everybody is doing. Do you really believe that? Because I never believed that. You know, I was like, well, what would be the point to be born into the world where literally we just slave away nine to five, Monday to Friday, and then you have very little time, you know, to actually do anything else. And being a human, there are things that, you know, we need to do like laundry and food, grocery shopping. And, you know, you know, like, like I said, my life is simple because I don't have children. But imagine you have children. There is so much stuff you need to do. So do you really think? That we just came here just to be constantly doing all these things and just to run in around in circles because it's never ending, right? There is no end to it, no stop to like all these duties and obligation and things to be done because it's part of our path. For what? 
you know like i mean i understand of course like you know being an uh for example being a parent you know there is a lot of purpose and meaning in that you know but that's just one aspect of who you chose to be in this life to be a parent or not to be a parent like you know like that's my case but there is much more, you know, there is much more. We came here to discover all these different aspects of who we are and look at all these different ways that we can experience life and look at this beautiful planet, right? Like, like I mean, obviously, I don't know what I don't know. I only know what I know right now in this, you know, what I have a an access to. But from my understanding, this is the more, like, colorful uh, planet with the with the most variety of possibilities for what it can be in manifestation, right? Because this is why we incarnate. We want to experience the manifestation of these uh, thoughts and of these, we, like, I mean, you know, it's not like spirit has thoughts, like of this knowing, you know, the, the, uh, the unlimited uh, um, access to everything there is, you know, source being part of everything there is. But then, of course, we want to come and it's like, okay, but I want to experience that. I want to have that experience, you know, what it, what does this feel like to have this experience, whatever that is, positive, negative, challenging, doesn't matter. You know, it's like the soul wants to know, like, how, how does this, what, what it's like to have these experiences, right? And yeah, you can say, well, part of that, yes, is to go to work every day, nine to five, Monday to Friday for, what, 60 years? or whatever i mean i don't know but just for that to be the purpose of someone's life to just do that to sacrifice their entire life and then you know be unhappy and then have feeling like i need to check out because i cannot cope with life i cannot cope with reality it's just too hard it's just too much i don't think this is what we came here to experience not for like the amount of time we are experiencing this you know i really don't think so like that's why like my entire life my entire childhood it just didn't make sense to me i was like you know uh observing what i observing with the environment that i was you know like born into it didn't make sense to me i was like i want different for myself i you know i don't want to sacrifice and do a job that uh let me just pause this because it's very loud outside okay now the <laughs> the rocket has uh gone so anyway so that's what i was always feeling like you know like growing up as a child and as a teenager i just felt like in a sense uh, i felt that this is not what feels natural to me but i felt a little bit like not hopeless necessarily but like sad because i was like i don't know how to have the experience that i know that i can have here you know because i always had this inner knowing i guess perhaps it's my jupiter in the first house in uh, aquarius square in the nose that like no way i'm not you know i'm not confirming i'm not living these stories anymore you know south node in scorpio nine house jupiter archetype with pluto there jupiter Arch sagittarius you know sagittarius archetype so anyway so uh, this is what i'm trying to say that technically i and i guess a lot of people who are watching this might resonate if you're still watching all my life I felt like I don't understand this world. I don't understand why we even here if this is how we're supposed to experience it, you know, in this slave rat race and just like then find all these different things of self-soothing, all sorts of addiction and method of checking out and externalization of our power and all that. And then going into extreme feeling we need to control everything because we need to have this power that we don't have, whereas we're looking for it in the wrong places and it just never really feels quite satisfactory and is never quite... Um, filling the void that we are feeling and that is coming from this disconnection, disconnection from the source, disconnection from our spiritual aspects of who we are, which is much great, greater than this physical physical um, incarnation. I mean, this body is important because it's the instrument through which we experience life on planet Earth. But, but you know, the, this, this body is just, it's just a fracture of, uh, of who we are. You know, I mean, the soul is unlimited, it's so vast. You know, even our auric field is like <laughs> much, much bigger than what we think it is, you know, like much, much, it goes much further than just like around our physical shell. So this is so crazy, guys, you know, so crazy. So that's why I feel with this eclipse, you know, and this complete reset of the energy that has just taken place on 4, 4 portal and 4, again, just to mention, you know, 4 is the number of Saturn, is the number of stability and the 4, 4 adds to number 8. We are in a year 8. You know, eight is the number of abundance and the manifestation. But in order to be able to do that, you need to embody the four. 
which is that like you need to feel safe and secure within yourself. Fourth house in astrology is the cancer house, right? It's the cancer archetype, now, the fourth house. So it's about, again, you know, all this Mar Capricorn, Cancer and Gemini. We need to decide. We need to decide with our free will. We need to decide who do you want to be? Who do you actually think you really are? I don't mean like who do you think you are, but I mean like who do you really think you are? You know, like do you really feel that you are just these identities and all these con constant chores and all these stories and all these things that we were born into that we just adopted because we didn't know any better? All that is dissolving now because literally, like I keep saying, this is the year of the choice where people have to make a choice. Do I want to continue the same way and play in the same gay game that is actually ending now anyway? So sooner or later, this a a game will be completely unavailable. But now we are in a transitionary phase. But the new energy is already here, which is why more and more people are waking up. More and more people are dissatisfied. More and more people are looking for alternatives and wanting to connect with people who uh, are on the same wavelength and, you know, supporting them in this process so they don't feel they're going crazy. And also, you know, like when we look at this, um, you know, again, I'm looking at the chart. <laughs> um, Mars. You know, of course, Mars is having a conjunction with Saturn two days later, as I said, but Mars is actually going to conjunct Neptune. You know, also the last Mars-Neptune conjunction took place in 2022. Mars has a two year or two years orbit, right? So Mars is going to conjunct Neptune after the full moon in Scorpio. It's going to be on the 28th, I believe. And yes, yeah, 28. And then on the 29th, Venus moves into Taurus, and on the 30th, Mar Mars will move into Aries. So we'll have the rule of the North and the South Node in the signs of their rulership by the end of the month, quite ready for the new moon in Taurus, which will be the first lunation in May. And just before the new moon in Taurus, we'll have the last mercury Chiron conjunction after Mercury goes retrograde, Mercury stations retrograde on the 25th. So Mercury is now making us to see, making us to reevaluate, uh, look again, you know, redefine whatever you want to say, you know, however, it doesn't matter the label, but it's making us to go backwards with regards to the way we think and observe reality and connect with the life, uh, you know, that is around us. Because by the time Mercury makes its last conjunction to Chiron, you know, and Chiron is the wounded healer, what, where we wounded, what is preventing us from stepping into this new direction, it will be just before the new moon in Taurus, which is again a conception of a new energy, energy that started last year and it's now ending. All this, everything that began in 2022 and 2023, you know, with regards to Mars because of the two years transit and Mars is the rule of the North, now we're paying attention to Mars and Mars is in Pisces. Mars is in Pisces for the entire Aries season. It was in Aquarius only for a few days at the beginning of Aries season, but now it's in Pisces for the entire Aries season. What does it mean? You know, it means that everything that, um, the things that we, because North Node is in Aries, we're heading into a new direction, everybody knows that. It's the uncharted, undiscovered uh, territory, which is why a lot of people fear fear, because it's the unknown, right? We don't know, we cannot predict, ego cannot control, you know, but when you understand the function of ego, ego is the database of the past, is the archive, you know, it only knows what it knows to help us to survive in this three-dimensional world, but it's limited by the three-dimensional experience, but we want to go beyond now. So we need to discern where actually what my ego is telling me is useful for me and when it can be like preventing me from going into the next level, right? So with this Mars being in Pisces, it's showing us very clearly what is and what isn't part of the next cycle because Pisces is the totality. So that's why we are experiencing this massive... Um, I don't want to say challenges because it doesn't necessarily have to be challenges, but this intensity of energies, of flooding of this old stuff, you know, like seeing the things in the world, like nothing new under the sun, you know, but now it's all happening at once, you know, natural disaster, war, you know, like um, financial issues, everything is all happening at once, you know, no kidding. And then uh, in our personal lives, you know, all these old patterns of the past, dysfunctional relationship, unresolved stuff, you know, ancestor, it's all out there. It's all out there present in our current life. Why? Because with the Mars as the rule of the North Node is and how Pluto acts consciously, you know, being in Pisces as the rule of everything in Aries, including as of yesterday, the rule of the South Node, Venus, 
and Venus is in a new phase conjunction to Neptune, Mars is closing to Saturn and Neptune. This is why. Because we need to see the totality of everything that came before in a manifestation, which is part of our life right now, is present in our life to discern Virgo, opposition to Pisces, to discern and use our knowing as a wisdom. Wisdom is the applied knowing, otherwise it's just the information, right? We need to apply it into practice, put it into practice to discern what out of what the experience held meaning and what now doesn't have a meaning, what is making us feel restricted, constricted and imprisoned. Pisces, again, prison of our own making, you know, is one of the cards that my soul sister pulled for this week in her um, share cast. It was the it was the eight of swords, the nine of swords. The nightmares, right? Eight of Swords. The um, it was the Eight of Swords for this week, uh, but it's the prison of our own making, being stuck in our own thoughts, right? Which is the swords, it's the thoughts, is the how we think. It's this Mercury. Mercury is gonna conjunct Sun on the eleventh. Mercury is retrograde, you know. So we can see literally the story, how the story is so clear to us. And like I said previously, was it the twenty twenty two? new moon yes it was the new moon aries 2022 which cycle which i did in 2023 a year ago jupiter was was conjuncting uh, neptune it was in the closing phase it was just about conjuncting neptune a year later you know 2023 jupiter is conjuncting chiron in aries in a closing phase to the eclipse the story is ending. It ended a long time ago. Now Uran uh, Jupiter is just about to conjunct Uranus. And the last time they conjuncted was in Pisces and Aries. Aries and Pisces because of the retrograde. So this is what I mean. This is not something that happened yesterday. This is this has been happening for a long time. And yeah, just you know, before I close this, you know, for the last uh, for those who really like want to know. Uh, because we're always looking at the cycle of the eclipses, right? So the last time we had the North Node in Aries and the round of eclipses in Aries Libra and the eclipses were happening on the North Node because the North Node was in Aries. Um, so we had the solar eclipse, we had three solar eclipses and one lunar eclipse. And there was 24, 25, so there was spring 24, 20, 25 April uh, was the solar eclipse on the North Node in Aries. And then we had one lunar eclipse in October 2025. And the last eclipse on the North Node in Aries, um, well, actually, I believe by that time the North Node wasn't even in Aries anymore. But the last eclipse was in 2026, March 2026. Yeah, I'm pretty sure by that point the no node, nodes were already in Pisces Virgo, but I didn't write that down. But just, you know, just so we know, the last time the eclipses were happening while the North Node was in Aries was between 24 and 26. So obviously the node must have been in, um, because nodes are, are in a sign for uh, 18 months approximately, 18 and a half months. So by 2026, the the nodes were already in Pisces Virgo. So this is the last time we had the uh, North Node in Aries was technically in 2025. At the time, Pluto was in Sagittarius. So it was dissolving, it was rupturing, it was er eradicating the old story. It was already happening back then, 2024, 2025. I remember that very clearly because that's the, that's the 2024 is the year I left Slovakia for the first time when I was 19 years old. That was literally where uh, my entire life started changing. Uranus was in Pisces, 2024, 2025, even 2026. Pluto was, in, uh, Pluto was in Sagittarius, Uranus was in Pisces, Neptune, as the ruler of Pisces, was in Aquarius. So we can see what's going on here. Now Pluto is in Aquarius. There is a lot of stuff happening in Pisces right now. And Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, and Jupiter is just about to conjunct Uranus. The last time the eclipses were in Libra, Aries before this time, but the, the North Node was in Libra, the last round was in 2013 to 2015. There were only lunar eclipses. Now can we see what's happening? This time we are having only solar eclipses in Aries. You know, before it was just lunar eclipses. There was no solar eclipse. There was all lunar eclipses, I checked. So it was all lunar eclipses. 
So they were all happening in Libra. So that was on the North Node in Libra because they all happened. Uh, it was 18th of October, 8th of October and 29th of September 2015. They were all eclipses in Libra, you know. So, um, I mean, I'm not saying... <laughs> Obviously, lunar eclipse, so sorry, so they were um, Libra season, but they were all correction. So they were all full moon in Aries. There was no new moon in uh, Libra at the time. Now we have in new moons in Aries. <laughs> there is no full moon in Aries. As I mentioned, there is no full moon in Aries. So last time the nodes were in Aries and Libra. All the ecl oh, We only had lunar eclipses in Aries. There was no solar eclipse in Aries. That's what I'm trying to say. There was a solar eclipse in Libra, but there's no solar. I only wrote the ones in Aries, so I wasn't focused on the one in Libra. Okay, so the last round of eclipses prior to this one in Aries and Libra, all the Aries eclipses were lunar. So they were all full moons in Aries, which were taking place in October and September. At the time, Pluto was already in Capricorn, uh, Uranus was already in Aries and Neptune was already in Pisces. So everything shifted. You, Pluto already started eradicating this Capricorn, you know, this structure of the reality because the story ended. The story already ended uh, before 20, 2008, right? Because that's when Pluto moved into Capricorn. So that's it. It was already maxed out. Um, Uranus, like I said, was in Aries at the time. So that's a new beginning. That's where Uranus Jupiter had a conjunction, but only on. Um, what was it, one degree, zero degree, and then they move back into Pisces retrograde. Now, we have these eclipses, right, as we are experiencing them at the moment. Uh, we already had the first solar eclipse last year, as I already mentioned, April 2023. We have in the one now, and then we're going to have one more next year, just before Neptune moves into Aries. That will be at the end of March 2025. The solar eclipse will be happening. Uh, solar eclipse in Aries 2025 will be happening with Neptune on 29 degrees. Because after that, ne Neptune is moving into um, Aries. So Pluto is still in Aquarius. Uranus in, is in uh, Taurus still. Because Uranus is going to move into Gemini later on that year. I think it's in summer, July or something. And... Um, uh, Neptune is on literally 29 degrees Pisces because after that on I think it's March 31st Neptune moves into Aries for the first time so in 2013-2015 all the eclipses in Aries are lunar we only have full moons that's it we don't have no solar eclipse you know like the energy wasn't ready at that time yet it wasn't the right time things were being seeded Uranus was still in Aries we were still you know seeding the energy Neptune was already in Pisces there was still stuff that needed to be dissolved there was stuff that had to happen between 2013 and now there was stuff that had to take place and we know what it was now because we didn't know at that time now all the eclipses are solar, all the eclipses, well not all the eclipses, all the eclipses in Aries, because I'm focusing on Aries here, okay, uh, so that's why I'm making people confused, I'm only focusing on Aries eclipse, because Aries is the new beginning, it's the new direction, now everything is solar, so it's the new moons, they are all new moons, which is saying we see in a brand new energy, the energy that was the midpoint 2013-2015, because full moon is always the midpoint, this energy started in 2004-2005, that were the solar eclipses. There was one lunar. There was one more solar, 2006. Already in the notes were Pisces and Virgo. So that cycle was at midpoint during 2013, 2014, 2015. Now the cycle ended. Now this 2024, especially this one, because it's on the new, uh, in a new phase conjunction with North Node, this is a complete reset. Literally, this is a complete reset. Everything that happened since 2004 for these past 20 years, this is a complete change. Like everything is changing. Like I said, the last one is happening two days in 2025. Two days before Neptune moves into Aries. Aries, new beginning. Neptune is the source. Neptune is the, you know, the everything there is. So that's it. This is the year of the of the change, the year of the shift, the year where people have to make a choice. So there is the, there is nothing to be afraid of. Because what are you afraid of? Of yourself, of source, of your connection to everything there is? This is first time in like... 10,000 years, apparently, that's what I was given. This is the first time where we have that choice, where that uh, clump or that, you know, amnesia or that whatever it was, spell, is breaking for the first time. We finally, can, we, we finally are being given the choice that, yes, now you can actually go and create the life you want because the life as you knew it is, that's it. That's it. So that's what I mean. This is the most exciting time 
to be alive ever. Like everybody that is incarnate now, incarnate now that's going to remain on this physical plane, <clears throat> wanted to be here because this is a privilege. This is really, and people might think I'm insane saying this, <clears throat> but this really is a privilege because this is the first time for a very, very long time that us as a soul incarnate actually has the opportunity to create a reality we want through connection with the spirit, the source. Neptune is moving into Aries next year, right after the last solar eclipse in Aries. And yeah, and then the next round, when the south node will be in Aries again, we're going to have a mix. We're going to have both solar and lunar eclipses. Three of the four will be total eclipses, and Uranus will be in, um, Uranus will be, uh, in Cancer, again Cancer, apart from the one that will be on uh, 33-33. March 30th, 3033. Oh, freeze. What is free? Free is Jupiter. <laughs> it's about expansion. And we have 33-2033. Sorry, not obviously. Uh, not We are not in 30-33 yet. <laughs> So three, three, six, three, three, six, and then we have six, six is twelve, and that's uh, number five, right? It's uh, fourteen. Uh, so anyway, you know, without going too much, because we're already at the hour. So yes, yeah, so the next round of eclipses will be between twenty thirty two and twenty thirty four, where Uranus will be already in the sign of Cancer, right? Because Uranus is now going to move into Gemini. But by the time we're going to have this round of eclipses, Uranus will be in Cancer. It will be in Gemini only for that one eclipse in March 3033. 30th of March 3033. And this will be also a total um, solar eclipse in Aries, but on a south node. On a south node, not north node, on a south node. And the next round of eclipses with north node in Aries, we're only going to have two in Aries. You know, normally it's three or four. And then we're going to have only one lunar uh, in uh, September 4, 2042 and one solar in uh, April 2043. And guess what? The solar eclipse in Aries on the North Node on April 9th. Now we have in April 8th. April 9th, 2043, Pluto will just move into the sign of Pisces for the first time. Because it's going to retrograde back into Aquarius um, but then back into Pisces 2044 for, I think, I think it's going to be like 2067 or something insane. It's going to be there even longer than it's going to be in Aquarius. But this is what I mean. You know, can you see by 2043, 2044, by the time we have the next, um, you know, eclipse on the North Node in Aries, next eclipse on the North Node in Aries, solar eclipse, new moon, solar eclipse, Pluto will be in Pisces. Just, just moved into Pisces. Literally, will be on zero degrees. This is crazy. This is crazy. So, can you see how we completely changing the history? Like, literally, between now, in next twenty years, this is this will be a very different world. And like, literally, now, twenty forty four, the chapter of the, the of the end of the of the what was before this, the, it's ending. That's it. That's it. You know, that's it. It's finished. 2044, 2024, that which came before, this is all culminating, it's all ending, we're not going that way anymore, that's it, you know, it will sell, the energy will self-destruct, whoever will remain participating in that energy, that energy will self-destruct eventually, because it is no longer aligned with the, with, with where we go in evolutionary as a species on planet Earth, incarnate, with regards to where universe is going. It's no longer in alignment, it's no longer allowed, it's no longer possible to state uh, like being disempowered, being slave, feeling restricted, living this rat race life, 9 to 5, you know, Monday to Friday, just literally dying, all our life is dying. I mean, yeah, physically we are, but it's like feel like we're not even living. Whenever, where do we feel alive, you know? That's finished. This is no, no longer uh, allowed. It's not longer allowed. And then now between 2024 and 2043, this will be the creation of the new earth. Th this is it. Literally, the, the old is ending now. The new is just about to begin. You know? So this is why this year is so important. So this is the big, big picture. And I know if people are still listening, probably by now your brain is like spinning, like what? But it's very simple. It's very simple. 
This shitty debt which you thought you were under the spell of everything that happened in the past 10,000 years, that is all dissolving. And now we have the opportunity to truly become what we came here to be under being fully aware, you know, through the connection to spirit, what that is. Not getting our information from, you know, religion or some leaders or some kings or someone else. No, it's your direct line to the everything there is. And this is going to create a very different world, very different reality for all the future incarnations, for everyone that is yet to come and us to come later if we do. Um, you know, the souls that choose to come back, it will be a very different experience. The The life on planet Earth will be completely different. Completely different. I'm not saying it will be different already, like the new Earth will be fully, fully, fully here in 20 years, but it will be very different from what we are experiencing today. And this is the year. So anyway, guys, I wanted to pull some cards, but I'm just going to leave it for tomorrow because uh, it is... Um, this video is too too long. So I'm going to just pull one major arcana and I'm going to pull cards tomorrow in my practical application of astrology. So if you would like to see some card pulls with regards to these energies, then tune in tomorrow. But I'm just going to put, pull one major arcana and actually at the bottom of the deck we have the world. I mean, that just says it all. The world, 21, that was literally right here. Okay, but let's just pull one and I close with that and then uh, we, we come back to cards tomorrow. Okay, what is the card? <laughs> if there is another one apart from the world, the universe would like us to be aware of it because to the energy of the Aries total solar eclipse taking place on Monday, April 8, 2024. They don't want to come. I, <laughs> I already gave you a card. What do you want? <laughs> Star. Oh my God. Like you cannot make this up at the boot. <laughs> At the bottom is strength <laughs> oh my god so we had the world because things are closing that's what i mean the world is the last card of the major arcana that's where everything is ending and i mean that's literally what i've just been talking about in this video and then we have the star is the hope is the rebirth is the one one foot on the ground one foot in the waters and then being connected to everything there is the universe the star, the hope for the future, the Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. This is why I'm like literally feeling so emotional right now. Like I'm just tapping into this energy. Like this is why. And we have to be strong. You know, this, this, these two cards, they come as a pair. Is the Aquarius and Leo. Is the 17, which is number 8 and the 8. This is the, this is the card that represents this year. And look at all this white, uh, yellow, all this solar plexus energy. All this optimism, you know, the, the, the beast. You are not just this. You are everything. You know, it's this higher self, the higher self, the woman in the white, you know, the infinity symbol, the woman in the white, the purity. This, this is us incarnate, you know, having the human experience. You know, which one is the one that you are, the, the, the wolf you feed, right? So it's the higher self that wants to help us, to navigate us through this physical plane. So with the solar plexus, you know, the energy of I am, you can create that which you desire to experience. The, the, the Leo is red, which is the base chakra. Red, which is the fire, the fire of creation. But now the spirit wants to be present. We are creating something we've not created before. We're going beyond. We are connecting to the cosmos. The cosmos is co-creating with us. We're no longer separate. The higher self, the higher self to me is like the stars. You know, the higher selves, this is the like, physical manifestation, so we can see it. And here it's like, it's everything. This is so perfect. I mean, this is so, I, I mean, I can't even imagine any, any different cards to come out. <laughs> okay, guys, I leave it at that. One, zero, eight. Crazy, crazy stuff. But yeah, I'll come back to cards tomorrow. We're going to pull some more. So this is it. This is my interpretation of this uh, new moon total Solar eclipse in Aries under the influence of Mercury retrograde. So do excuse, <laughs> do excuse me tripping over my own words. But yeah, I, I hope that I did it justice and the cards just were the last cherry on the cake. So much love to everyone. And I'll speak to you again tomorrow with my practical application of astrology and some cards pools. Okay, much love everyone. Bye for now.